Welcome to this parents' information briefing. The purpose of the presentation is to help you as parents navigate your way through your child's academic year ahead. I think it's very important, before we get into all the fine details, to remind ourselves about the school's core values as set out in our mission statement, may they all be one, and also in our school prayer. In that prayer, we pray that everyone will find their true vocation in life. What is it that we mean by that? Well, slowly but surely, by studying so many different subjects, our children will find the things that they're really passionate about and things that are going to inform their future career choices. So doing, they will in turn bring happiness to other people. And that's a key part of life at English Martyrs making life better for other people. I want to assure you, parents, of our commitment as a teaching body to each and every one of our students this year. And I want to remind you that we're always here at the end of the phone, should you need anything. In the first instance, please contact your child's form tutor or head of year. Thank you for joining us. Hello, my name's Mr Boonham and I'm the head of Year 7. I'm going to be taking you through some of the key expectations and information for this coming year. The form tutors in Year 7 are as follows. Mrs Sheehan in 7 Campion, Miss Bryant in 7 Clitheroe, Mr Kushabali in 7 Fisher, Miss Devereux in 7 Moore, Miss Soul in 7 Sherwin and Miss Jones in 7 Ward. The form tutor is the first point of contact for parents or carers who will then liaise with the head of Year and other staff if this is necessary. The school's pastoral system is enhanced even further by Mrs Webster, who is the Director for Inclusion. James Noakes is our school chaplain, and Mrs Collins also provides additional pastoral support to students who may require it. The spiritual life of the school is its cornerstone. Morning prayer is said each day, and there is a religious assembly which takes place each week. A voluntary mass is celebrated in the school chapel every Friday. Students that do attend do so in place of tutor time. Due to COVID restrictions, the gathering for assemblies and masses is not currently possible. Assemblies will be delivered online instead. Almsgiving is especially important during Advent and Lent. English Martyrs has clear expectations of what we expect from our students, and we know that as parents and carers that you will support us with this. The uniform policy is clearly laid out on the school website and in the information booklets that you received last term. Just a few points that are worth mentioning. Formal black shoes which are polishable and with no visible logo. A jumper is optional but it should be black and v-necked. Students are permitted to wear one pair of sleeper studs, one in each year. Makeup and nail varnish are not allowed and hairstyles should be a natural colour and cut at an appropriate length. The use of mobile phones is not allowed in school. If students decide to bring a phone into school they do so at their own risk. We ask that mobile phones are turned off and put in the bottom of student bags and are left there until they leave the school grounds. If students are found to be using their phone, it will be confiscated from them, and as parents or carers, you will be asked to collect the phone from the school. It will not be given back to the student. An after-school detention is also set. If you need to contact your son or daughter during the school day, you can telephone the school reception, who will endeavour to pass on your message. Every student has been issued with a school planner. These serve as a method of communication between home and school where messages can be written. We ask that you sign the planner each week. Parents should also sign the home school agreement, an ICT protocol found in the planners. The school has an extensive extracurricular programme which we hope will run this year. We encourage all students to participate in at least one activity. For school catering, a cashless system is used. Parents can put money on their child's card online or students can top up their card themselves using the card machines provided in school. For students who choose to bring in a packed lunch, we ask that it conforms to what is considered a healthy meal. I hope that I've made everything as clear as possible and I look forward to working with you all over this coming year. Thank you Mr Boonham for outlining our pastoral support and expectations for Year 7. I'd like to introduce myself. I'm James Neville, Vice Principal at English Martyrs and in this presentation I'll be speaking to you about assessment, testing and key dates. The assessment system at English Martyrs is based on the new GCSE grading system and will be consistent across all years 7 to 11. 
build on the accuracy of the existing Year 9 to 11 school system and focus on the development of key academic skills for each subject. I've included here the uh, equivalent for the new GCSE grades uh, versus the old GCSE grades. For Year 7 Assessment A, here, if the student continues with the existing quality of work and effort, they're likely to gain four grades six, four grades five, and one grade four in GCSE at the end of year 11. Students receive assessment grades each term, that is three times per year, and the assessment grade is in essence a prediction. If a student continues this quality of work and this level of effort, this is the grade they are likely to achieve. Each subject assesses students based on the new GCSE grades, that is 9 to 1, and each subject reviews its GCSE grade descriptions and the curriculum taught in each year. Each subject also decides what level of work is required in each year for each grade. Here is an example of progress over time in mathematics. We can see that students need an incrementally increasing percentage in their exams to gain a grade 5 between year 7 and 11. So, for example, a student in Year 7 would be expected to gain at least 30% to achieve a Grade 5, whereas a student in Year 11 would be expected to achieve at least 65%. Here we can see progress over time in three subjects for a student from Year 7 through to Year 11. And this student, in this instance, gained a Grade 5 in Mathematics, 6 in Religious Education, and a grade 7 in English by the end of year 11. Students will know exactly what's required to gain each grade in their chosen subjects and here is a mathematics example um, so we can see that uh, for each grade, grade 4 through to grade 7, there are very specific things that students must uh, be able to achieve and this is included in their assessment profiles which are also available on the school website. The assessment profiles provide students with a focus on what they need to do to improve their grade. For example, a student will understand, if I wish to improve from a grade 5 to a grade 6 in English, I must do this. Likewise, if I wish to improve from a grade 6 to a grade 7 in geography, I must do this. Assessment grades will be given to students once per term and will be sent home. Each term the students review their grades and focus on the steps that are needed to be taken to improve their grades further. Expected grades will be produced for each student. The expected grade is based on historical data and it illustrates what students with your son's or daughter's previous academic record would usually be expected to gain. It allows you to compare the progress made by your son or daughter with that made by students with a similar prior academic record. Here the expected grade can be compared to assessment grades and this informs progress. So in this instance the student had an expected grade of a 5 in mathematics, achieved an assessment grade of a 6 and therefore had outstanding progress. Meanwhile in IT the student had an expected grade of a 5 but only achieved a 4 in their assessment grade so therefore had insufficient progress. To consolidate and build knowledge and skills, students must review their work regularly. The Ebbinghaus forgetting curve illustrates aptly how information, if not reviewed, can be quickly lost, whereas information that is regularly reviewed can be committed to long-term memory. Homework is a very important part of the review process, and students and parents can access all homework set via Show My Homework. Here is a homework schedule which enables students to plan their time carefully and to ensure that they are completing enough hours of work per week to consolidate all that they've done in class. Testing is a very important part of students' learning and students will have tests in English, Mathematics, Science, Religious Education, Geography, History and French twice a year in January and June. Students have a term time revision planner to help them allocate time for revision in their weekly schedule. Available on the school website are assessment profiles, test topics to be learnt and valuable revision guidance which we would encourage all students to access.
There is a very strong correlation between student attendance and attainment. And as we can see from the 2019 data, those students who have the highest attendance tend to achieve much more highly in attainment eight than those who have low attendance. As a school, we use e-praise as our means of rewards and praise for students. And this can be accessed online and students keep count of how many points they've gained. And this is an excellent motivation for students to continue to try their very best. For your convenience, I've included here year seven provisional key dates. These may, of course, be subject to change in the current circumstances. May I thank all of those who've contributed to this presentation and thank you as parents for your ongoing support of your sons and daughters as they embark on this exciting time in their young lives. We will now conclude with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, bless our school, our teachers, our classrooms, and the students, so our school will be a place of learning and love. Help our teachers to do their best, and guide our young people to be the best students possible. May our classrooms be places of hospitality, compassion, excitement, blessings, and joy. May our minds and our hearts be filled with knowledge of you, our world, and all that will help us grow in faith with you. We ask this through Jesus, your Son, the greatest teacher and student of all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>